G'day. Today I'm going to share with you how to hand tap a hole. In this case, I need to tap an M4 hole into a piece of work. So I'm going to go through the process and share with you step by step how I do it. First thing I need is a job that I need to tap. And in this case, I need to tap three M4 holes. To do that, I'm going to need an M4 tap. Now, because I'm going right through the work, I'm actually going to use a taper tap all the way, and I'll not bother with a intermediate or bottoming tap. I'm also going to need a T handle, and lastly, I'll be needing to crack out the drill set so that I can pre-drill the holes to the correct size. Now, what I'm gonna mention here is I need to tap an M4 hole. So this screw that I'm going to be using, if I measure that across the top of the thread, you'll see there that my caliper reads almost bang on to four millimeters. And what's really important to note at this stage is that if I were to go and drill a four millimeter hole, there would be no material left for that thread to purchase as it was screwing in. I need to drill a smaller diameter hole, which will leave me metal that I can cut with the tap and after the tapping has been finished, there'll be something for the screw to thread into. How much material needs to be left is determined by how tall the thread is on the screw. That's gonna be very difficult to measure on such a fine and small thread. The easiest way to get the information on cutting size is to use a tapping drill size chart. So over here, what I can do is I can look down the list and I can find my M4. So my M4 tap has a thread pitch of 0.7 and a tapping drill size in millimetres of 3.7. As you can see here, I don't actually have a 3.7 millimetre drill bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill 3.5 millimetres and then I'm going to be careful that I don't have too much friction when I'm trying to tap the hole. Now I'm pretty sure that 3.5 is going to give me a good enough clearance to be able to run the tap through the material. What I'm going to do now is drill through with my three and a half millimeter drill bit to prepare the holes for being tapped. If you look carefully at the end of the tap, you'll see that it has a square drive machined into it. The tap handle has an adjustable square drive. You just twiddle that handle to adjust the size of the square drive up and down. So in this case, I slot the square end of the tap into the tap handle, snugly tighten that down onto the square drive and that's now ready to go. It's always best practice to use a lubricant to tap a hole. I really like this stuff. It's called Bow Lube, made by Boeing. And I like to think that Boeing is an organization that knew what they were doing. So I've got my tap prepared with some Bow Lube on the end of it. Now it's really important when you start cutting a thread that you do it with the tap perpendicular to the work. If you start cutting a crooked thread, you will end up either needing to redo your work or you'll end up trying to cut a crooked hole through the work. And this will increase your workload dramatically as the tap starts to go off center to the actual hole. It will be trying to remove more and more material and quite easy to break a tap. I turn about a turn down and then I turn the, the tap backwards again. This breaks off the little buildup of metal and further reduces the amount of friction. It also decreases the chance of breaking a tap and increases the amount of energy you'll have left at the end. Now this is a very shallow hole and I can see now that the tap has fully gone through the material. The friction 
has gone to virtually zero. That hole is now tapped, ready to use. As with anything metalwork, you do spend a lot of time judging how you're going off of the feel you're getting from the metal. That's it, how I tapped a hole. Until next time.